Hi, here, on site here and uh, doing a multi-glide pocket indoor with automation. Um, we're first starting out checking the rough opening, what the builder did, uh, making sure it's level, flat, and straight. Uh, we had to do a little shimming or layering of layers to get the sill out level. And once that's done, we'll do our final flashing and then we'll be ready to install. Okay, so here we're, uh, we just use flex wrap uh, and you can use any material you want just to build up the sill to level it off. We uh, set up a laser and just checked multiple locations uh, for where it's high and low. And we just had this material on site, so we're using this. Uh, the sill was tipping in, so we're layering the backside up to get the sill so it's gonna be level. And uh, once they're all done here, we're gonna do a final flex wrap flashing to completely water barrier seal um, the sill. So currently we're just doing our final layer of uh, flashing after we did all our layering to level the sill. And once we get this all done, um, we're gonna set the sill. We're gonna get the sill set up and we'll show you about caulking, proper caulk the bottom of the sill. We're at the step now to seal the bottom of the sill. This is a really critical point. Um, we need to make sure that each seam is sealed correctly. Um, so we don't have any potential future water infiltration. Um, so right now, Lance is gonna caulk all these seams. And I did white so he can visually see it. Um, so just keep an eye on this, but I just wanted to reinforce this. It's in the instructions, this needs to be followed. It's very critical. So we're gonna seal each seam across, and then we're gonna go down along the edge of the tape. We're gonna box this basically. Okay, so we caulked the bottom of the sill as, as per instructions. Uh, we flipped it over on the sill, located it. Uh, with this being a pocketing door, we, um, the corner key locates it at the pocket, and we just gotta get the sill straight all the way along. So we referenced off the outside. You can do a reference line on the inside as well. And then after that, we just had to apply weight um, to the sill to smash the sealant down, make sure it got oozed out. And then we're gonna, next step is we're going to run the screws through the sill into the subfloor to fasten the sill down. So what Lance is doing here now, we need to make sure if we're going into a wood substrate um, that we add sealant to the holes so the screws go on the sealant to seal around the um, screw penetration. Repeat. In this step, uh, we're gonna, we have to install the interior rise back dam for the pocket only right now. Um, so following the instructions, we have a specific caulking location to apply sealant, or I guess caulking, or apply sealant to the back, the bottom side of the riser, and also onto the frame. So you'll see us doing that. And that's just to seal this, um, if water gets into the pocket, um, it's not leaking out through the um, riser. that and we're gonna run a bead in the back side here you gotta put it on at an angle like this and turn it snap it down okay so let's do a dry fit here so slide your top up in there just be careful not to scratch the sill you got to kick your end out, Lance. Okay, we got plenty of room. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna caulk the backside that we need to caulk. Mm -hmm. um, we'll get it pushed in. We'll get a taunt there, run one screw in so it's tight, or so it's just snug. And then we're gonna lower the head down and we gotta plumb and level this side jam. So hopefully, hopefully by centering or marking the center of the head and the center of the RO, we don't have to move this too much. So, so you got your, and your T25? Yep. Yeah. We're gonna seal right here where the side jam butts up to the, uh, this flange on the sill. That's a critical area to seal. We don't want water to, if rain is hitting here, we don't want it to leak past. 
So you'll watch me do this. Just make sure it's clean as possible. You run a bead like this and up the side, up the side, just like that. And then now we'll set this side jam in. So if you guys want to grab, grab that in lens. You got your drill? Yep, just one in the bottom. Just so you know, so we're lining up. We line up to the inside. A water leakage point here, so we want to seal the side jam to sill here. So remember this, we got to put this on first. This hooks around. Uh, slides back and forth. So what we're gonna do, Jason, we gotta caulk this and set that in the bottom. And then we're gonna angle it yeah. and rotate it in. Gotcha. So we'll do some sealing here. Sure you seal that spot too. There you go. So we're gonna set this in. Bring your come or come around. Yep, bring it out. Like that. Okay. And then go to the top. That's all lined up. Key. And this goes up. This is sag. make this level. Yeah, now we're just um, leveling or plumbing the interlock. Uh, we'll shim, put shims at each screw location, run the screws in to lock it in place. Okay, so right now, uh, frame is in, sill, side, one side jam, the head jam, and the interlock on the pocket. And now we're installing the first panel, um, which will interlock Going with the pocketing. Again, right? yes. And then uh, we'll go get number two, set that in, and number three, and set that in. And we'll do, uh, Final adjustments here in a little bit. Okay, that one's on. You're off, Lance. So now what we're going to do is we're going to seal before we put um, the follower, which goes on the last panel, and we'll hook to the interlock that's on the um, pocket frame. Uh, we're going to seal the gap so we don't get airflow around. On the inside, we're just going to run a bead of sealant because it's so tight. And then the outside, there's a bigger gap. We're going to spray foam that. It really kind of flushes up, but you got to go into the, into the groove. So this application of the motor is a little bit different. Uh, normally the motor is down on that end, but with this construction, they didn't have room for it. So it's getting put on the jam side or the locking jam side, um, which requires a little bit different application. We'll have to put the motor here and a different type pulley down the other end. Um, so it's a little bit different, but it can be done. Since we did the motor on the lock jam side instead of in the pocket with this installation type, we had to use a special pulley and that had to go into the RO. So we had to do a little modification from what the builder did um, to get the pulley back into, the, into a pocket. 
So we got that installed and now we're going to um, run the belt around the pulleys and get it the length correct and get that cut and installed. Or the belt ready to go. This always comes long. It's like 52 feet. So it's more than enough for most doors. So once we get it taken apart, we'll feed it through around the pulleys, um, cut it to length and connect it to the turnbuckle and get it uh, adjusted so it's just taunt. And then we'll hook it to the door. Here, I guess. Spin around. So the teeth, the to go in the teeth there. The hole. Yep, like that. Okay. The other that through, right? Yep. I see the other side. The other hole. Yep. Okay. So then we're gonna. You have to feed it all the way down. Wrap it around the other pulley down there and come back. And we just gotta make sure we don't twist it when we before we hook it up. We're gonna hook the turnbuckle up to the belt, um, feed the one side through, we loosen the screws and the clamp, uh, feed the belt in there, and then uh, tighten it down, and we'll cut our other side to length, tighten it, and then use our turnbuckle to get our tension so it's taunt, and then lock it down, is what we'll end up doing with the turnbuckle. So just you know the belt is uh, steel inside, so you got to have a good cutter to cut it. So where do I want it? I would just kind of at the screw. Cut it at the screw? You know, or at the end, back into the screw there. So let me look here. Yeah, you're good. That's why that's why those turnbuckles are going to be adjusted, Jason. So you can't you don't have to be exact. It's steel braided, so. Put that in. So now, John, I'm gonna, on the pulley, on the pulley on the motor, I loosened the set screws so it would float and get aligned with the belt. Um, now I'm gonna, now we got it aligned, I'm gonna tighten the set screws down so it's in its place. And there's two of them. Okay. Now we'll attach it to the panel and then we'll cycle it a few times and see if we're set. <coughs> Let's get out of his way. So now we found the pulley down there was a little high, so we're rubbing on the frame. So now we're just going to shim that down to where we get that in line. So. So we're just doing red super cable from the control box to the motor. And then the blue wall switch is gonna go from the motor to the, this keypad. Okay, now press and hold program. Let's just say release button. Okay, now it should be move fully closed. We're setting the certain, yeah, open and close positions. Okay, fully closed. Press and hold program. Release button. No, it should cycle. 